question the member for Hugh. Thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker. It's pleased to rise this afternoon and speak on the Treasury Laws Amendment Enhancing Whistleblower Protections Bill of 2017. Deputy Speaker, whistleblowing plays a crucial role in uncovering corporate and tax misconduct. It is a key means of combating poor compliance cultures by ensuring that companies, officers and staff know that misconduct will be reported. The opaque and complex nature of corporate crime makes it difficult for law enforcement to detect abusive practices. In many cases, corporate crime is only detected because individuals come forward, sometimes, and many cases, at significant personal and financial risk. The importance of protecting whistleblowers has been recognised for many years. However, while legislative protections have formed part of the Corporations Act 2001, since 2004 they have been sparingly used and are increasingly perceived as inadequate, having regard to advances in the public sector and overseas. Currently, there are no specific protections for tax whistleblowers, and the range of secrecy and privacy provisions relied upon are incapable of guaranteeing absolute protection. That is why, in the 2016-17 budget, the Coalition Government announced greater protections for those who will disclose information about tax misconduct to the Australian Taxation Office. This will further strengthen the integrity of Australia's tax system. Active protection of whistleblowers to encourage them to make disclosures is essential and the government is determined to ensure that it has the right legislative settings in place to achieve this, while at the same time ensuring disclosures can be fully investigated and the procedural fairness is provided to, to those who may be subject of a disclosure. That is why the government, led by the former Minister for Revenue and Financial Services, Kelly O'Dwyer, committed to in creating more transparency and accountability in business by strengthening the current framework to ensure both corporate and tax whistleblowers can be confident of protection and greater incentive to make disclosure. This legislation delivers on the government's 2016 budget's commitments to protect individuals who blow the whistle on tax avoidance behaviour, tax evasion and other misconduct. It delivers on the government's commitment in Australia's first open government national action plan released in 2016. And Dep Deputy Speaker, to have a regime, open and transparent and fair tax regime, is very important, Deputy Speaker, to make sure that we are attracting capital and that capital is being invested where it can be put to the most productive uses. And when we look at our overall tax, tax scheme, Deputy Speaker, we must be concerned about the 30 per cent rate of corporate tax that is payable in Australia and how that is internationally competitive with other jurisdictions. Were we up against uh, <coughs> regimes, tax regimes in Hong Kong and Singapore, where tax rates are 15 and 17 per cent? In the UK, where they're reducing their tax rate down to less than 20 per cent? Where we've seen the biggest, uh, one of the biggest reductions in the US corporate rate of tax, Deputy Speaker? We have to consider how much longer can Australia maintain that 30 per cent rate of corporate tax? And there's often been great concerns, Deputy Speaker, that if we, have, if we did reduce that rate of tax, that it would somehow cut into government revenue. But our history tells us the exact opposite. If we look at our history from when Paul Keating reduced the corporate rate of tax to when Peter Costello and John Howard reduced the corporate rate of tax, Deputy Speaker, Surprisingly, what happened, and this applied every single time, the actual tax revenue that flowed into the Treasury was greater, not only in real dollar terms, but in nominal dollar terms, but also greater as a percentage of GDP at the lower rate of tax. Now, there's no guarantee that that will happen in the future, Deputy Speaker. 
But we need to be very careful monitoring the international situation to ensure that Australia's corporate rate of tax remains internationally competitive. <laughs> and then, Deputy Speaker, there is also, with our, when we're on the corporate rate of tax in Australia, there is the application of franking credits, a system that has been introduced and backed by Labor governments past because they understood that this was an important method to get capital creation into the Australian economy, hear, hear. to make sure that there was an encouragement for savings and investment and that new businesses and new business opportunities could be taken up in Australia. Hear, hear. That was the principle behind the franking credits. But what we see, Deputy Speaker, we see a proposal which is unfair, which is discriminatory and which is regressive to change the application of franking credits in the Australian taxation system. Shame. But what this ultimately does, Deputy Speaker, it separates a clear ideological fault line between those that sit on that side of the House and those that sit on this side. On this side, we fundamentally believe that at first instance, the profits of a business belong to the shareholders. It is the shareholders that have put up the capital and taken the risk. The profits of the business belong to the shareholders. And if that profit is then distributed to those shareholders, Deputy Speaker, it is taxed at their marginal rate of taxation. That is what we believe. And we believe that system should apply the same for a sole trader, whether the profits are earned in a partnership or whether the profits are earned by a business using a corporate structure. The 30 per cent tax rate is effectively a withholding tax. It is a tax for foreign investors. Australian shareholders and Australian investors, it has been the policy of both sides of this chamber that that belongs to the individual Deputy Speaker. Now, we see in the Labor Party, they believe that the profits be don't belong to the individual, they belong to the business. Now, we have a progressive marginal taxation rate in this nation, individual tax rate. For those that earn between zero and $18,200, they pay no tax. We've decided that is fair. Low income earners that earn below $18,000 pay no, no individual rate of tax. Above $18,200 to $37,000, for every extra dollar they earn, they pay 19 cents tax. Above the $37,000, up to $80,000, they pay 32.5 cents tax in every additional dollar. $80,000 to $180,000 is 37 cents for every extra dollar earned. And above $180,000, it is $0.45 cents in the dollar. Of course, the Medicare uh, levy is on top of that, Deputy Speaker. Order. Order. The, order. the uh, member for Fenner with a point of order. Deputy Speaker, fascinated by, as I am by the member for Hughes' recitation of the tax scales, I wonder if you might direct him to be relevant to the bill before the Thank House. Thank you, member for Fenner. I've been uh, listening to the member for Hughes and he has wandered off a bit. It is about enhancing whistleblower uh, over uh, protections. The member for Hughes may continue. First, on the point of order, if I may, Deputy Speaker, uh, this bill uh, is about tax. It involves the corporate rate of tax in Australia. It involves the Corporations Act. Uh, it is a very, very wide-ranging bill, and I can see no reason why uh, issues about when it comes to whistleblower protection, whether the taxation system is fair, whether it's discriminatory or very, whether it's regressive, plays a great part of whether on the legislation requirements of whistleblower protection. So, Deputy Speaker, I was getting back, to, um, the, getting back to the provisions of the bill and also of our taxation system. To have whistleblower protection and to have a fair and adequate tax system, Deputy Speaker, it must be fair and transparent to all. That is a fundamental point, Deputy Speaker, of not only this piece of legislation but of the entire principles of our tax system. And if we're going to have a tax system where one class of Australians is discriminated against that pays 
different rates of tax on their income that they earn, Deputy Speaker. This is unfair. This is discriminatory. This is regressive. And it is entirely contrary to the principles of this legislation. So it wouldn't surprise me that the shadow treasurer jumped up to the dispatch box and tried to shut down debate on this because he's not, oh, I apologise, I withdraw, he's not the assistant treasurer. That's why I'm sorry if I got demoted. I'm sorry. My apologies to the member for Fenner. Well, the member for, the member for Fenner, no wonder he wants to get to the dispatch box and try and shut down debate on this issue. Because I believe in heart of heart that the member for Fenner knows that the proposed changes are unfair, he knows that they are discriminatory. And most of all, being a good Labor man, he knows that they are aggressive. And yet he would prefer to have the debate entirely shut down. Well, Deputy Speaker, I would hope that a few members, like the member for Fenner and others on the other side of the chamber, gain their voices and speak up. Speak up for the low income earners of this nation. You want to speak up for whistleblowers? That's fine. Also speak up for the low income earners of this nation that if you are elected to government are wanting to put in a policy that will reduce their incomes by up to 25 per cent. People on incomes of less than $25,000, you are Hughes, coming after order. them. The member for Hughes is straying again. The bill is on the Treasury law amendments enhancing whistleblower protection. I ask that he come back to the bill. I thank the, I thank the Speaker and I will come back to the provisions of the bill. The Open Government National order. Action Plan was developed corroboratively by the government and civil society. The plan consists of a package of 15 commitments that aims to advance transparency, accountability, public participation and technological innovation in Australia. I'll say that again. Transparency, accountability, public participation and technological innovation. Because we need, Deputy Speaker, we need to encourage people to put their savings into Australian companies to create jobs in this country, to create those technological innovations that we see that will lift our pro productivity and lift real wages. And yet, Deputy Speaker, there are those in this House that want to see a taxation system that encourages investment in overseas shares. They want to, see a, they want to change the playing field, move the goalposts. So where investment has happened in Australian businesses and Australian shares listed on the ASX, they are now to be put at a disadvantage so that there will be encouragement in investment in money overseas. That is not only unfair, that is not only discriminatory, that is not only regressive, that is also anti-Australian. And on this side of the House, Deputy Speaker, we will call that out every single day of the week. Stronger whistleblower protections is the first commitment of the plan and is designed to support the plan's objective of enhancing Australia's reputation for responsible, transparent and accountable business practices. How can we have accountable business practices where one class of Australians has to pay a 30 per cent marginal rate of tax on the first dollar that they earn? The government's commitment is to ensure that Australia has appropriate protections in place for people who report corruption, fraud, tax evasion or avoidance and misconduct within the corporate sector. This will be achieved by introducing whistleblower protections for people who disclose information about tax misconduct to the Australian Taxation Office. And it will strengthen and harmonise corporate whistleblower protections for those available in the public sector. Specifically, the commitment will stronger whistleblowing protections, will advance the open government partnership values of public accountability and transparency by encouraging and protecting and compensating whistleblowers whose information reveals artificial tax structures and misconduct. We don't want to see artificial tax structures in this country. We want to see that every Australian 
no Australian is discriminated against in the rate of tax that they should have to pay. If we ever decide that it's marginal rate of tax, Order. everyone should be under the same rules. And the late